Hello and welcome to another macro video. Today we're going to be looking at wildcarding, so it's something which is generally applicable to editors and not specifically for macros, although all of our macros are going to use wildcarding. Um, I've said in real life and I just simply mean uh, the life of an editor. So to find out the commands and things that we use in wildcarding we need the find and replace window and there if we click on more uh, we've got the, the item there with a the box use wildcard so we're going to need that uh, when we're finding things and we've got special down here uh, because that is where we get all these special commands that we're going to be looking at so let's have a look at what we are going to be dealing with today um, so in that uh, specials list uh, you've got question mark and which is, it, which is for any character and you've got asterisk for naught or more characters then I'm going to look at uh, this one the uh, at symbol uh, previous one or more then the uh, angle brackets which are beginning and end of word we've then got the square brackets which are here character in range and then curly brackets um, which is num occurrences, the number of occurrences of something. Um, and then ex the uh, parentheses are for an expression. We'll use that a little bit today, but um, I want to go on and do more about that in the second session. Uh, then the backslash is uh, useful. I'm not on that list there, but we'll see where that comes in handy. The not with the uh, angle bracket, the square brackets with an exclamation mark standing for not, and finally the uh, caret symbol. So if you take something like an n dash on there, then I'm not sure if you can see it, but uh, that's got caret equal, which is the symbol uh, that we use in find and replace. If I say find next, that finds an n dash, that's a symbol for an n dash. So there are other ones that you can use like uh, m dash or column break or whatever. Right. So let's get rid of that. I'm I'm not actually going to use the find and replace window because the text is so small that you won't be able to see it. So I'm going to be using the macro instant find down wild. Sounds a bit complicated, but it's just a way that you can use to do a find and replace or more particularly a find, um, a wildcard find, very easily and obviously if I'm demonstrating it that's an important thing to be able to do. So let's just get rid of that, we don't need it just for the actual. Uh, so I've got some text down here. Uh, I'm going to disappear aren't I? So you don't mind do you? Um, let's bring myself back in. Hello! Right, um, so we're going to look at them uh, in the order I've suggested there. So we're going to start off with uh, the question mark, which I said is for any character. So I bring in some text from my prompt sheet. Um, so uh, T question mark E, what's that saying? It's saying look for letter T followed by another character followed by a letter E. So if we, if we do that and I'll just run the instant find instant find down wild wherever it is instant I've got so many macros here I can't find them uh, run so that then executes that find and if we look in the find and replace window we'll see that it's put it in there so that if I want to find the next, find the next, then I can do that easily. So that's why I use this particular macro. So as I was saying, uh, it looks for T blank E basically, if you're used to crossword puzzles. T blank E, something with T blank E. Alright, so any of those, not necessarily a whole word, um, but like there. And I, I'm going backwards and forwards by using uh, two macros, find forward and find back, so I can just move quickly through the different occurrences of the thing I'm looking for. Uh, okay, zero or more characters, the asterisk, let's bring in something for that. 
So let's try that one. Okay, now what's that one done? It's look it's found a letter T and then it looks along from the T until it finds an E and says there you are, that's that's what you're looking for. So any T and then looking for an E, any T going to an E. Uh, so there it's found the T on that line going down to the E on the next line. It, it may not be immediately obvious why these are useful, but um, we'll see that a bit later on. But let's just um, show them as they are. Right, the next one is the at symbol. So let's bring one of these in. Okay, so uh, in the find and replace when we look at special when we look at at it says previous one or more so what does that mean uh, what it means is that it's there's a character then I put the at so it's saying the previous character the zero oh uh, sorry the letter O um, find one or more of those characters find one or more of the previous character so O at so what we got so if we run if we do that find it's finding u it's just finding o another o another o another o ah now there it's found just o sounds a bit odd uh, but we'll th th and this this uh, symbol the at symbol can get confusing um, so what it's saying is find the previous one or more and that's what it's done. It's found, uh, I've written it down here. My question is, have I found one or more O's? So if I go to here, have I found one or more O's? Yes, I've only found one, but that's that's one or more, isn't it? So, but this one, I go to there, and you, you kind of think it should take the two O's, but no. Have I found one or more O's? Yes, I have, I've found one or more, I've found one. I've, I've fulfilled that condition. So um, to to see how it might be more of more interest is if we say o at followed by a comma. Now then, if we try that, that finds the two because it has to find one or more o's followed by a comma. It's when the at symbol is followed by something that it actually becomes more useful. So it's a number of O's followed by a comma. So if I take another example, I'm, I'll do it on here. I might say um, uh, a number of O's followed by an F. So let's try that. A professional, that's one followed by an F. Proofreaders, that's two followed by an F. So it's one or more followed by uh, an F. OK, so um, let's move on to the next of the symbols. Where were they up here? Uh, we're going to go on to the angle brackets. So we've got uh, beginning of word and end of word. So if I search, for example, for S, E, and then angle bracket, that's saying SE at the end of a word. So let's see what we get. Please, use, please, please, these. All right, so it's SE at the end of a word. And if we go the other way and say let's have SE at the start of a word, look for that, sent separately. Okay, so it's just SE at the beginning of a word. Uh, let's try another example. Let's have look for ARE. Search for that. So we've got area. So it's the beginning of a word. R. Most of them are going to be R, aren't they? So if I go back to there, um, if I say beginning and end, that is saying literally just the word R. So if I search for that, it finds R, but it doesn't find area. So it didn't find the area there on the previous line. It only found the R because it's saying just that word. Okay. 
Right, then next we've got the square brackets and that is saying a character in a range. Now I've um, I've said a character because I want to emphasize that this is about um, finding one character. So if I just make that smaller, I suppose that looks a bit like an H really, but I, I want you to think that it looks like an A. So if something is in, in uh, the square brackets, we're looking for a single character. So uh, in the range, it can be any, any, any range of characters. Um, I could look for, um, say, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. I can look for any of those characters. So if I look for that, there's an 8. There's a 4 and a 6 and an 8 and a 6. What's it found there? Uh, ah, so it's, it's not found the 5, it's found the 2 and the 4, not the 9, but the 6, 2. Okay, so it's just looking at a, a, a range of characters. So it's looking for a character that is somewhere in that range. Um, and as we had there, we've got the hyphen symbol. So what that's saying is that we can we can say, well, I want to write a, a character in a range. So rather than writing out all the let all the numbers in that range, um, then I can say, look, find uh, anything from naught to eight. So if I look for that, I get the eight and the f those ones. Okay. When I get to here, we're okay. Here, it misses the nine because that's not in that range. And obviously, uh, the the application of this normally would be. Uh, 0 to 9 because we're saying find a number please. Um, okay so let's move on to the next in our list. So let's have a look at this one. So we're going to look at the curly brackets and the curly brackets stand for a number of occurrences. So here's my example. Um, I'm using my range of 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and I'm saying, um, well, let, let's start by saying 2, for example. So what do we get for that? Uh, well, it finds 46. It doesn't find the 8 or the 6 in my postcode. Uh, it found, finds 2 there. It finds those 2 there, and those 2 there, and it doesn't find the O because that's a, that's a third one. So if we go back to here, and what I had uh, when I was actually planning to do this, I had one comma. So what that means is one or more of those numbers. So let's try that. So that's the 8 and the 46, the 8, the 6, so that's one or more again. Um, and that, it doesn't find the 5 because that's not in the range, so it's 2, 4. It finds the uh, 6, 6, 2 and the 4, 4, 0. In other words, it finds as, it kind of gets together as many as it can that uh, fit in that pattern that I've given it, numbers in the 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. So if I make that 0, 2, 9 and try that, 8, 46, 8, 6, so it finds all of those, all right, because they're in, the, they're all in the naught to nine, and so it gets as many of those as it can. Um, we can go a bit further, so we get that. We get the nine inch. We get the 2008, 2012, 11. And if if there had not been a high from there, then it would have found the whole thing, because it tries to get as many as it can. So that's a uh, number of occurrences. Um, now we're going to look at the at symbol. So we've got, we've had um, all these. Um, what am I doing? Oh yes, I'm trying to say, trying to show you a, a sort of bit of a problem or a contrast, let's say. Um, if we try this range, remember what uh, at said. Um, at said the previous one or more, so this one finds the eight and the, and the four of the forty-six and the eight and the six. So it it just finds the first of the 
ones in that range. Let's let's use uh, 0 to 9. It's probably better. 0 to 9. Let's use that. And let's go to here. Okay, so it only finds the first of those. So the at um, finds, if you like, the minimum possible, and the one comma in curly brackets finds as many as it can. So, um, right, so if we're looking, if we try um, looking for a number followed by a space, and try that. That finds it uh, just the eight. Sorry, I had to stop there because the uh, command didn't work. So um, I know why now. Uh, okay, so I'm going to look for uh, numbers followed by a space. So if I look for that, then it finds the eight uh, followed by the space, and the, that followed by the space. Um, or I could say. Um, followed by a range of different things. Again, it's a character if you remember. Um, so if I try and say look look for um, a number fol um, followed by a space or a carriage return. So if I try that one, uh, it says that's an error. It says that carrot p is not a valid special character. and um, I'm not quite sure why uh, Microsoft won't allow that, but anyway, what we have to use instead of carrot p is carrot 13. So if we try that, then uh, there's that. That's following a space, and this number is followed by um, a carriage return. So those, so it's found those. Okay, and actually, the equivalent of that would be that if we followed that by uh, we said at the end of a word. So if we try that, so it's it's the end of a word. Um, it didn't find the six tr because that wasn't on the end of a word. Okay, so far so good. So we're going to look at a few more ranges now. Um, so copy those in. Um, We've done uh, 0 to 9, uh, so A to Z, what's, what does that do? Okay, so um, let's just get rid of those for the moment because they'll confuse things. So if I do the A to Z there in brackets, square brackets, uh, then it will find any of the capital letters. Okay, and actually it also finds another one here. Look, uh, I've done seeded that error, well not an error, but I've put that in there just to be... If you look at that character, it's actually an A acute. So the A to Z actually includes the accented characters uh, and not just the straightforward, not just the 26 straightforward A to Z uppercase letters. Okay, so uh, if we go now for A to Z and see what that gives us. So that gives us all the lowercase ones. And <coughs> we can do uh, A to Z as well. And look for that. So it finds upper and lowercase. So all of all of those uh, characters. Um, and then, so if we now uh, bring in the curly brackets as well. Let's try um, A to Z with curly brackets and our one comma and see what that gives us. So that will find any, um, well there won't be many of these um, because they're all um, singles aren't they? I always find UK won't it? There you go. UK as, as two uppercase and it'll find down here look the postcodes because there's those are two together. Um, so if we do the um, lowercase equivalent then if we run that one so that finds any um, words effectively because it's any a number of lowercase characters 
uh, and then if we put in the uh, A to Z as well and try that then it pulls in all of them and if you go down to here then it with a bit of luck it should pull in that even though it's um, uppercase and it's quite helpful to have a look at these um, in a different way I'm going to do it by looking at, by using Fredit so let's move that out of the way um, and let's show you the one of the appendices in my book has got um, all the characters there uh, with the ASCII, ASCII codes um, okay uh, so um, the the A is the 65 capital A and 90 for the Z then it starts at 97 um, for the lowercase a and ends at 122 and then the accented characters are at this top end here so let's um, bring in a little credit list um, and let's use these different um, these is the search ranges we're interested in although I'm doing it with <coughs> excuse me with with credit um, it's the search ranges I'm trying to trying to um, explain about so if I do a Fredit search that replaces the things it finds with itself but highlighted then if I run Fredit um, oh sorry I got the wrong wrong one so let's do the A to Z put a highlight on that uh, run that okay so as you can see it's highlighted the lowercase ones and these accented ones and there's also another couple of odd ones uh, that one there is um, is like a, a superscripted O if you use Watchar to tell you what it is it's a masculine ordinal the 186 so it's like a um, it's for the it's when you're writing uh, NO so it is a, it is an O and these two it's picked up as well in the middle here this um, uh, OE and uh, some reason or other it doesn't it hasn't picked up that Z with a whatever that accent is on it um, and so we get rid of that one let's do the next one which is the capital oh, I have to take the Z the uh, highlighting off there okay and let's try this next one the capitals no it's got to be it's got to have to be superscripted there uh, sorry highlighted okay so it's done A to Z there and it's done that S there the OE and then these um, ones here so let's get rid of that one and do the combination to get all the upper and lower case let's get rid of the highlighting let's try this one So it's done all up, upper and lower, and all those. Um, okay. So um, now, th just just as a warning, that I have seen on uh, wildcard demonstrations on the internet um, using A to Z, and the idea on that, um, what they're saying is, well, if you use A to Z from there to there um, then that that will pick them all up and the answer is no well actually it doesn't so if I highlight that let's put it in yellow just to be different so if I run for it for there okay well it does doesn't it it does A to Z yeah that's alright however if you look back up here it's also highlighted all these ones in, uh, in between the square brackets and all those what's more it hasn't picked up the accented characters so what I'm saying is don't be don't be fooled into thinking that a capital A to little Z will give the same effect as doing it in two separate ranges which is what you're supposed to do A to Z and A to Z I keep stopping uh, on the recording because I want to try and do it all in one take so I need to make sure I know what's coming next and what's coming next is that if I just get rid of that highlighting on there 
Um, just to say that we can also, uh, for ranges, you can use ranges for unicodes. So I've got um, letters like this. Get rid of that. Uh, let's pop that underneath there. Um, so it also it works for unicodes. And what we need to know is what these characters are. So if I use what char again, um, that's a D45C in hex. That's the uh, ask. That's the hex code for the Unicode. And I can do a, a, a range with these. Um, so that was a D. And what was this? What's this one? That's a that's a C758. So the the different ones. If I want to try and catch all these um, uh, characters down here, then I've got to use a range of codes. Let's get rid of that so, and say that we're wanting to go from. Um, now we can do it by typing in the codes or copying and pasting them from here. So if I try that and see what happens, and let's try one of these, and put it in there. Just want to make sure I haven't got any spaces in there because that confuses it. Um, I don't seem to be any spaces in there. So if I try that, let's put a hash here to stop it there. What do we get? Answer it's an unacceptable code. Okay, well, let's not do it that way. Okay, let's re just rehearse that. Let's try it again. Um, what I'm going to use this time is uh, I'm going to use the uh, Control X character, uh, con um, sorry, Alt X function, which uh, converts to Unicode. So if I do, um, if I say go from C naught 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 as a as a Unicode, uh, so that's a, a character, suitable character. And if I go to uh, D six FF with and then turn that into a Unicode. If we try that one, okay, that gets some of them, but if we pick one of the ones in between that it misses and see what uh, that is by using WhatChar, uh, that's an AD naught naught. So let's uh, make the start of the range A naught naught naught. Try that and then run that, and that picks up. I think that's that's picked up them all. I think so. But the point is that you can use ranges for different Unicodes, uh, not just the, these. Uh, I think the Korean characters, um, but all sorts of other characters from from different language groups. Um, if they, you need to highlight them or, or change them in some way. Right. So let's clear these out of the way and uh, bring back our uh, main window. Uh, we're going to uh, do some more of the original things. We've, we've, um, we're looking at the, I'm looking to look at the backslash next. So, let's look at a, a, a useful uh, range. And that is this. So it's a space, the ASCII 32. Um, I can use a space or a, an actual ASCII 32, but the uh, 32 is more visible on the video. Um, followed by either a comma or a full stop. In other words, we don't want spaces before full stops or commas. So if I see what I've got, ah, well, that there's a space before that and another one there and so on. So let's just open this out a little, give us more space. So if we go back to the find and replace, um, um, but we may say, well, okay, I want to know if there are any spaces um, on before uh, exclamation marks and oops and question marks as well. So if I try that one, and it says the find what text contains a pattern match expression which is not valid. 
and the reason for that is that if I type a, uh, an exclamation mark in there, if you remember, that has a special meaning. It means not, and the question mark has a special meaning. means a single character. So it's not actually um, saying exclamation mark and question mark. And that's where the backslash character comes in. If we put a backslash character before that and a backslash character before that, then that is saying I actually do want uh, an exclamation mark to be one of the alternatives. I do want the question mark to be one of the alternatives in that range of possible characters. So let's try that. So we've got a, a space before the exclamation mark there and a space before that question mark there. And uh, just to extend that uh, we can say well okay what about um, close brackets, close parenthesis, so backslash so if we've got any of those, uh, question marks, yep, there's a space before that um, close parenthesis. Okay, now let's look at uh, not, uh, the exclamation mark used as uh, a special character. So let's, um, oops, missed, copy that and paste it into here. Give ourselves some space. So um, what we're saying in the first one, let's move that for a moment, um, we're saying not, so the exclamation mark says not, so this range um, with the square bracket, so remember a square bracket means find a character, and so it's saying find a character that is not one of those, so what's it going to give, let's try it. Uh, okay, what's it found there? Well, it's found a carriage return, or a new line, if you like to call it that. Um, so actually, we could put that in there and say no, we don't don't want to we don't want to find a carriage return either. So if we try that, then that says well, if the first character that's that fulfills that condition of not not being a letter, not being a carriage return, is that space there, uh, another space, then an exclamation mark. Well, let's let's add space to the list so let's try that so that goes to there, it misses the spaces uh, it finds that uh, apostrophe uh, comma full stop apostrophe and so on okay then uh, my next example is suppose I'm looking for mentions of proofreading and editing, which obviously there's going to be a fair amount in this text because this text below is stuff out of my book. So if I search for that, then editors and proofreaders, now it, it stretches across um, paragraphs, it just says anything. Let's go back to it, um, go back to the search. Um, edit and then uh, naught or more characters, any old characters, and then proof. So in doing that it finds go something going across the, um, the divide, if you like, there. Uh, and this one here is even more, so there's, there's a lot in between those two occurrences of edit and proof. And presumably I wanted something within a paragraph so I can use a different way of searching. I can use this one. So what that's saying is uh, look for something that's not a carriage return. In other words, don't split across the uh, from one paragraph to the next. Any character or any number of characters, because we've got at, any number of characters, so if we try that, so that's in that paragraph there, that's in that paragraph, and that paragraph. So it's only within those uh, paragraphs that it will find uh, those those things. Uh, right, so a few more useful um, find and replaces. So it's, it is wild carding in real life, things you might actually want. I've got here multiple carriage returns, so three or more carriage returns, so try that. This is this can could be a useful one. So it finds any places where there are whole sets of 
carriage returns one after the other. Um, another interesting one here is uh, looking for participles. So what that's saying is uh, a set of upper or lowercase characters because we've got the at to say one or more of those followed by ing. So let's try that. So we've got caring, being, aspiring, blah blah blah. Plenty of those. Nightingale. Um, okay. So it found my address. Um, and then another interesting one, or potentially useful, let's put it that way, um, is this one. So what that's saying is words longer than, um, let's put the A to Z in as well, why not? A to Z, so it gets. So let's find those. So it finds uh, longer words, so we can make it even longer, uh, 11, 11 or more words, uh, sorry, 11 or more characters. Okay, so that, that's a, a potentially useful one. Um, and I want to give you uh, two more things before we finish. Um, first one is a bit of a, a puzzle. Um, we're looking for, so if we're looking for occurrences of something like proof editing, um, a term that uh, editors know where a customer asks for a, a proofread and what they really mean is an edit. So if I want to see if there are any occurrences of that uh, expression or, or similar with similar punctuation in my book, I can say proof, edit, um, and then this uh, in square brackets is uh, not a space. So let's try that. So there it's found proof edit. So the, the not a space was the, uh, the dash there and the proof edit there. And if you watch carefully, it jumps straight down to there. Now why, why didn't it pick up that one, that proof edit? And the answer is that what it's saying is, if you remember, that says uh, a character. Find a character. Um, uh, uh, okay, any number of, but it's uh, any number of them, but it is a character. So there's a character between proof and edit and there but the next one doesn't have a character between the proof and edit. And I think you'll find when you're trying to do um, wildcards that you, you look at something you think should work and it just doesn't pick up the thing that you think it should pick up. And so you've really got to think very, very carefully about why doesn't it pick up such and such. So there's one uh, that it didn't pick up because I said, uh, one or more characters between proof and edit. So if there'd been a space there, it would have found it. Uh, no, it wouldn't, because it wasn't a it wasn't a character of, of any kind. So it would have it would find that. Oh, I don't know why I didn't find that. But anyway, I put it in the wrong place, didn't I? Anyway, stop. Being too far off piece. Shouldn't do that. Stop. Because it's nearly the end. Right. I'm just going to leave you with a final puzzle. Um, this is difficult. Um, so don't worry if you if you. Uh, reckon you can't solve it. When I do my next video I'll uh, explain it for you. Try to anyway. So final puzzle. So back up to here. Right so this is the uh, participles and we're trying to find a participle in other words some letters and that at symbol says one or more of those so it'll find it should find ring and so on but uh, you know it'll fi should find these ones down here which are sort of caring and inspiring so let's try that uh, caring being fine okay fine but suppose I'd started with this one which ostensibly is should do the same thing shouldn't it so if I try that one uh, it's bonging because it says I can't find any of those so let's try it, no look here, there, there's some down here there's caring there, look can't you find that? No, it won't find it so why doesn't, why does the first one find it and the second one doesn't? 
So I'll leave you, leave that with you and uh, have fun. Okay, bye for now.